because there's six rules basically that they always have laid out that are the rules of success. Now let me get right away to the first rule of success. The first rule of success is to have a vision. You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. It's like you can have the best ship in the world, you can have the best airplane in the world. If the pilot or the captain doesn't know where to go, it would just drift around. It would not end up anywhere or most likely in the wrong place. I couldn't see myself becoming a farmer or a worker in a factory or anything like that. Even though my parents wanted me to stay there and have a normal life. My father wanted me to become a police officer like he was. My mother wanted me just to stay there and marry a girl with the name of Heidi, hopefully. And have a bunch of kids and run around like the Van Trapp family in the sound of music. But that was their vision, not mine. My vision was totally different. I felt that I was born for something special, for something unique, for something big. I want to become a bodybuilding champion, just like Reg Park. I want to get into movies, just like Reg Park. And I want to make millions of dollars and be rich and famous, just like Reg Park. So let me tell you something, visualizing your goal and going after it makes it fun. You've got to have a purpose no matter what you do in life. You've got to have a purpose. So that's rule number one, have a vision. Rule number two is don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the naysayers. Everything I ever did, the thing that I heard out of people's mouth was, that's impossible. That can't be done. Or no. I remember when I want to be a bodybuilding champion, including my parents and everyone else around me, said this is impossible. Why don't you become a ski champion? That's what they do in Austria. Or a bicycle champion that does in track and field. You can't be a bodybuilding champion. That is exactly what I heard. And of course, I proved to the people that it can't be done. So whenever someone said to me, it can't be done, I heard it can be done. When they said no, I heard yes. And when they said it's impossible, I heard it is possible. Because I am a strong believer. I'm a strong believer of what Nelson Mandela said. That everything is always impossible until someone does it. Well, I'm going to be the one, I said to myself, I'm going to do it and I'm going to show it to them. Maybe it has never been done before. That's perfectly fine with me. But I'm going to do it. And I did not listen to the naysayers. So this is why I say don't listen to the naysayers. And the next thing, the third point that I'm going to make to you is, before we sit down with Jürgen and talk about the rest of the three, is work your ass off. There is no magic bill. There is no magic out there. You cannot get around. You have to work and work and work. I can tell you, I've watched the day for half an hour, Jürgen and his wife that put on this show, this great, great event here. They work their ass off to, to put this together. All year long, they work and they work and they work. This does not come together by itself. When people say we don't have the time, we have 24 hours a day. We sleep six hours a day. So it gives you still 18 hours. And there's someone shaking their head out here in front. They say probably, I don't sleep six hours. I sleep eight hours, right? Or just sleep faster. So we have 18 hours a day. The average person works around eight to 10 hours. So let's assume it's 10 hours. So we have eight hours left. Then you travel around an hour a day, maybe two hours a day. So now you have still six hours left. So what do you do with the six hours? So you got to work hard. I mean, let me tell you something. When I went to America, I went to college. I went and worked out five hours a day. And I was working on construction. 
because in those days in bodybuilding there was no money. We didn't, I didn't have the money for food supplements or anything. So I had to go to work. So I worked in construction. I went to college, I worked out in the gym and at night from 8 o'clock at night to 12 midnight, I went to acting class four times a week. So I did all that. There was not one single minute that I wasted. And this is why I'm standing here today. I became very friendly with Muhammad Ali in the 70s. And Muhammad Ali worked his butt off. And I saw it firsthand. And I remember that there was a sports rider that was there in the gym when he was working out and he was doing sit-ups. And they asked him, how many sit-ups do you do? And he said, I don't start counting until it hurts. Now think about that. He doesn't start counting his sit-ups until it feels pain. That's when he starts counting. That is working hard. As a matter of fact, I believe what uh, Ted Turner said, work like hell and advertise. You get it? Work like hell, go to bed, and early, early to rise, work like hell and advertise. So you work your ass off, and then you let the world know about your work. That's what it is all about. Let people know if you have a company, if you have a movie, if you do a sports, work your ass off, but then advertise and let everyone know. And the reason, one of the main reasons why people want to have a plan B is because they are worried about failing. What is if I fail, then I don't have anything else? Well, let me tell you something. Don't be afraid of failing because there's nothing wrong with failing. You have to fail in order to climb that ladder. There's no one that doesn't fail. What is not okay is that when you fail, you stay down. Whoever stays down is a loser. And winners will fail and get up. Fail and get up. Fail and get up. You always get up. That is a winner. That is a winner. This is one of my six rules to success. You can only feel complete as a person if you think about what can you do for your fellow member around you that maybe needs help. I felt like that everyone has a different motivation why you get into that. I, I was an immigrant going to America and I saw how America was the most generous country in the world. I mean, they opened up their arms to me, they helped me, they invited me for Thanksgiving dinner to people. They brought me, uh, the bodybuilders in the gym brought me plates to my apartment because I had no plates, I had no silverware, I had no bedware, I had no pillows, I had no blanket, I had no TV, I had no radio, I had nothing. They brought it to my apartment. Then, of course, when uh, 2003 happened, where there was a governor's race, California, I said to myself, now is my chance to jump in there and to really give everything. And people said to me, says, are you crazy to run for governor? When you're governor, he says, you cannot go and make movies anymore. I said, well, duh. I mean, I know that, that you can't run the state and make movies. Of course not. He says, well, you would lose all these millions of dollars. I mean, you're getting 20, 25, 30 million dollars a movie, you would lose that. I say, I don't care. I say, all the money that I made is because of America. My success is because of America. Everything that I've accomplished is because of America. I say, so for me now to give something back for seven years and not to make money makes no difference to me. I say, I'm going to do it. And I jumped in the end of the race and did it. And let me tell you something. I'm not poor because those seven years I didn't get paid. I'm perfectly fine. And it made me feel good that I could give back to America. I remember that everything I did, I always needed help. Think about it when someone says, Arnold, you're the greatest self-made man. I said, you can call me anything you want. You can call me Arnie, you can call me Schwarzy, you can call me Terminator, you can call me Governator, but don't ever call me self-made man. 
I said, because I did not get to that point by myself.